From Scott D. Miller Stadium on the campus of Wesley College in Dover, Delaware, I'm Pat Coleman, and this is Keith McMillan, and this is our D3Football.com report, doubling as our post-game show from the uh, second round game in which Wesley defeated Ithaca by the score of 23-15, a game uh, in, in which Keith, uh, Ithaca's uh, main offense came in the form of kickoff returns uh, and then in uh, dink and dunk passing at the end to get them to the point where if they'd recovered an onside kick they had a shot at tying the game. Yeah and, and that's what made it a, an interesting game. It was the the two big kick returns early including one that, that um, was a 91 yard return and it ended up being a pretty much the only offense Ithaca had in the first half. They finished with 63 yards of offense. They tried to establish the run in the third quarter, realized it wasn't going to happen, and pretty much abandoned it. They went to short passes. A lot of those went to Vito Buffoli. He finished with nine catches for uh, 103 yards on the day. He uh, caught a two point conversion pass when Ithaca made it interesting. But it was, it was really Wesley having a little bit of offense early, middle of the game, and then uh, hanging on late. Being able to establish its run, the run, that that big drive at the uh, start of the third quarter for Wesley, where they could run the ball, and, and Ithaca not being able to run the ball was a big difference in the game. Yeah, it was uh, Sam Carney's 91-yard kickoff return that actually gave Ithaca a lead, 7-6. Uh, Wesley had missed the extra point on its uh, on its first touchdown. Uh, then it's that eight-minute drive, 15 plays, 82 yards that uh, and allowed Wesley to take off more than half of the of the third quarter. Wesley got the ball first. Uh, at, at the at the third quarter mark, they were already leading 16 to seven. Made it 23-7, and you know Keith until the point at which uh, Ithaca basically abandoned the run game. And you know the sacks obviously make this a little misleading. Uh, it's 20 carries for negative 50 yards. Obviously, a lot of that is on sacks. But you know, frankly, Evan Sky only had Sky only had 11 yards rushing. He was their leading rusher. There just wasn't much that was working for them on the ground. Sure, and I think you, you even the sacks point to the, one of the big differences in this game, which was that Wesley interior defense defensive line against the Ithaca interior offensive line. The the two, really the three defensive tackles for Wesley because they were rotating in a, a third player. And uh, those two guys and uh, and um, uh, Amir Petros coming off the edge for Wesley, they made life really hard. That, that First they, they made Ithaca not be able to run the ball. Mm -hmm. And uh, once the run game was took away, taken away, um, it was you know pin your ears back and, and get after the quarterback. And there were so many times in the, in the second half of this game where we saw Tom Dempsey uh, look at his first read and then have to bail out of the pocket and roll out to his right and try to find somebody to get open because he just didn't have a lot of time to throw. And so you take away two elements of Ithaca's offense. You take away the ability to run, mm -hmm. the ability to run longer, you know, intermediate and deep routes. You pretty much only have the short passing game. Give Ithaca credit, they figured it out and they were able to drive down the field two times late in the game, but they were only able to punch it in once. Dempsey sacked seven times in the afternoon. Uh, two big, uh, you know, two big uh, guys on offense for Wesley here uh, this afternoon. Jamar Baynard, who got the uh, start again at running back as Wesley's kind of had some injury issues. Rick Jackson, who was a senior, had been a, a stabilizing force when he's been healthy, is uh, is out and would be out for the rest of the season. Uh, he had a, uh, so Baynard had 103 yards rushing and two touchdowns. And really, Jeremiah Howe was all over the place. He had uh, nine carries for 41 yards. They, uh, you know, they threw the ball to him uh, five times for 64 yards and they really, uh, they really used him in multiple different ways on Saturday. Yeah, he's sort of the, the, the main guy in the offense, even though Caduso is is the more explosive player, mm -hmm. Baynard was the was the back who got the most carries, the 20 carries. Howe had, had nine carries and five catches. And the way they use Jeremiah Howe is unlike you see any team use any player pretty much across the country. Howe is is just a five foot eight, 182 pound back, but he's got a lot of experience in this offense. Has been playing different roles for Wesley since he was a freshman, and they used him a lot on on a sprint sweep, jet sweep type of action they gave they hand him the ball like that and then they use that same action to sneak him out of the backfield and they hit one big play that set up a touchdown uh, about a 40 yard catch uh, in this game and uh, they also hit him on some some short passes where uh, it helped loosen up Ithaca's defense a lot so I thought he was a big key to the game and and I thought Baynard you know being a freshman running back and someone who's gotten carries up to this point but hadn't been the main guy he delivered pretty big today as well. So Wesley improves to 10 and 2. Ithaca falls to 9 and 3. You see Wesley in the national quarterfinals next Saturday versus the University of Mountain Union. He's Keith McMillan. I'm Pat Coleman. That's our D3 report, and we hope to see it on d3football.com.